class. Welcome to our lesson today on our second type of conic section. Today we're going to be talking about an ellipse, which is a pretty common um, conic section that we're going to see a lot in the real world. Um, today's ellipses, just like we've done with parabolas, we're going to look at our ellipses right now that are focused only at uh, the point zero, zero, and then later on this week we'll start moving that point around. So to give you an actual definition of an ellipse, an ellipse is a set of points in a plane whose sum of the distances from any two fixed points called the foci is a constant value. So if you recall with a parabola, with a parabola inside the parabola, there was that one focal point. In an ellipse, if you almost think of it an ellipse, an ellipse almost looks like two parabola that are kind of facing each other. And inside each of those, so inside this one, we have a focal point, and inside this one, we have a focal point. So I kind of remember that the ellipse is going to have two of these focal points, and we call them foci. Now, what this definition says is that any point on the ellipse itself, so let's take this point, if we measure the distance from here to here, I'm going to call that x, and the distance from here to the other focal point, I'm going to call that y the sum of that distance, x plus y, will be the same everywhere in the diagram. So for example, if I picked another point and plotted this point over here, the distance to the, to the one vertex, let's call it m, and the distance to the second um, focus, let's call it n, the, the, the sum of m plus n is going to be the same as the sum of x plus y. And if I plotted another point, um, let's just take purple here for example. So let's say I plotted uh, this point right here, same thing. The distance from this point to the first focus and to the second focus. If I add those distances together, let's call them p and q, the sum of those distances will be the same as the other two. So anywhere I go around this, this ellipse, the sum of those distances to those focal points is always the same value. Now, when we start looking at graphing ellipses, there is a ton of information that we have to, to really think about and consider. If you look at the diagram here uh, right now, you can actually see that when we graph an ellipse, there's actually going to be seven key points that we're going to have to identify. There is a vertex, two vertex points. There are going to be two co-vertex points. There's going to be a center point, which we said today will be at zero, zero. And there's going to be these two focal points or foci that are always inside the ellipse. So just note those, those seven different pieces of information that we're going to have to find. Now, on the graph, or on the equation, I want you to notice a couple of things about the equation. Sorry, I'm trying to switch colors here. <laughs> okay, if you notice the equation of an ellipse, there's a few things that are always going to happen. First of all, you're always going to see an addition sign. It's always going to say equals 1. And you're always going to see some sort of fraction or something that can be written as the fraction. The denominators of those fractions are referred to as our a squared and our b squared values. And one thing I want to point out is that in an ellipse, the a value is always greater than the b value. What's going to happen, though, is that the a squared and the b squared can kind of switch places. Okay, we'll talk more about what those are in a moment. Now, you're also going to see that um, if you draw the vertical and horizontal lines, excuse me, through the center point, we're going to end up with these two axes. The major axis is always going to be the longer axis, and the major axis will connect the vertex points. Okay, so we can see here that major axis is the longer one. The minor axis is always going to be the shorter axis, and the minor axis will connect those co-vertex points. So I always kind of think of it as the minor axis is less important and the co-vertex is less important as the vertex, if you want to think about it that way. Now, what is this whole A, B, and C? A, B, and C are actually representing our distances. A is the distance from the center point to the vertex. Okay, so back on our diagram, the distance from the center over here to that vertex, that's A, and the distance over to that vertex is also A. 
B is the distance from the center to the co-vertex. So the distance from the center to that co-vertex, that's B, and down here, that's also B. And then that leaves us with C. C is, as you might guess, the distance from the center to the foci or the focal points. So the distance from that center to the focal point and the distance from this center to the focal point. What I also want you to notice is that there's an important equation that actually relates those values together. In all ellipses, if you, just, if you were to square the a value minus the b squared, you're always going to get that c squared distance. So if we know even two of these pieces of information, we can easily find the third one. Okay. Um, another thing I want you to notice is the direction that this ellipse is opening. We call this a horizontal ellipse, meaning that it is a little bit wider as you go left and right. Okay. And if you think back to this a and b value, I said that up here, we said that the a value is greater than the b value. And notice that the a is underneath the x. So if you pay attention to where the larger number is, if the larger number is under the x value, then you know that that ellipse will open left and right or horizontally, just like the x-axis opens horizontally. So I always help that helps me to kind of remember which way to be able to plot it and, and things like that. Okay. If we want to quickly look at a vertical ellipse, the information essentially stays the same, um, and I'm not going to relabel all of it. Um, once again, the A value is the center to the vertex, the B value is the center to the co-vertices, and the C value is the center to the foci. Okay, so remember that this is representing center. Um, once again, we're going to have that minor axis, which is the smaller one. We're going to have that major axis, which is the longer one. Um, and once again, I want you to notice that the A is still greater than the B. But notice now where the A value is. This time, the A value is underneath the Y squared. So just like we said in that last one, if the larger number is under the Y, then you know that the ellipse will open up and down, okay, kind of like the y axis. So it kind of helps you to remember which way it's going to be going. Now, as you look at these last two examples, the last thing I want you to notice is where the focus points are, the focal points. You'll notice that in both cases, in the vertical ellipse, the focal points are going up and down, just like the vertices. And in the horizontal ellipse, the focal points are going left and right, just like the vertices. So what you need to remember is that the, fo the foci or the focal points always lie on the major axis. And remember that the vertices are the ends of the major axis. Okay. So a couple of things to remember when you're kind of plotting some of this information. Now, that's a lot of information, so I want to look at several examples of different ways we can use this information. And then we're going to have to get into some examples where you're going to be given some information and then use it to be able to write your own equations. So we'll start with just an example of being able to find the key information and to be able to graph it. You have the equation in front of you. The things that you're always going to need are the center, the vertices. Now it says four vertices, but remember that we kind of broke those apart into vertices and co-vertices. And then you need the focal point, so the foci. There's only one center, and in today's equations that center is going to be at zero, zero. And that's because if you think about even the parabolas, you'll notice that there's nothing with the x and y, and that's kind of why that center's at zero, zero. Okay, there will be two vertices, there will be two co-vertices, and there will be two focal points. So we're going to have to look for six more ordered pairs. And I'm going to start with just plotting the center point, okay? Now, in order to graph this, we're going to need to know our A value, our B value, and our C value. And remember that our A value is going to be our larger number. So if we look over here, this 36 is representing our A squared, 
This 25 is representing our b squared. That means our a value is 6 and our b value is 5. Now if we quickly use that equation, I'll do it off to the bottom, a squared minus b squared equals c squared, we can also find our c value. a squared minus b squared equals c squared. Uh, 36 minus 25 is 11. So c squared is 11, which means c is square root of 11. Now, we always talk about plus minus, but remember that these are representing distances, so I'm just going to leave it as square root of 11. For the sake of plotting these points, it's probably a good idea to also estimate what the square root of 11 is. It's around 3.3. When I plot the point, I'm going to look at that estimate so I know where to plot it. But when I write the ordered pair, I'm going to look back at this exact value. Okay? So now, where do we plot these points? Again, look at where they are located. Okay, so for example, the uh, a squared is below the x. Okay? Well, remember, that means that this is going to go left and right. And then whatever is below the y, this is going to go up and down. So if you go back to our values, we're going to go left and right six places, and we're going to go up and down. Remember, our v, b value was 5, so we're going to go up and down five places. And now we plot those. From that center, we're going to go right six places and left six places. And these are my vertices, my longest axis. So I can write those points right away, uh, 6, 0, and negative 6, 0. Then for my b value, I'm going to go up and down five places, down five places. Those are my co-vertices. So that's going to be 0, 5, and 0, negative 5. And now for my focal points. Now remember that the focal points, I'm going to plot those in purple, but remember that these are always going to be on the major axis. That's going to be the longer one. And since my major axis on this one is left and right, I'm going to have to go left and right the square root of 11 units. Now, square root of 11, we said, was the same as 3.3. So from my center, I'm going to go right 3.3. There's my focus. I'm going to go left 3.3. There's my focus. When I write the ordered pairs there, though, I want you to go back and use the exact value. So my ordered pairs were at positive square root 11 and negative square root 11. When we're graphing the actual ellipse, remember the focal points are inside the ellipse, so we're actually going to be connecting the vertices and co-vertices in as close to a circular shape as we can. And problem number one is done. Okay, here's a similar problem. Okay, and this one, um, again, look at some of the main features right away. Uh, we need our center, our vertices, our co-vertices, and our focal points. Um, the center is going to be at 0, 0 today, so we can plot that point right away. And now we need to get our A value, our B value, and our C value. Okay, For the A value, look for that larger number, which means we're looking right here at that 16. That 16 is representing our A squared, which means our A value is 4. For the B value, we'll look at the next number. That means our b squared is 8, which means our b value is square root of 8. Now, you can write it as square root of 8, preferably simplify that as 2 square root 2. And for the sake of plotting it, probably want to know that the square root of 8 is approximately 2.8 as a decimal. Okay? Once I've got my a squared and b squared, now I can find my c squared. Actually, let's do that in purple a squared minus b squared equals c squared. So we have 16 minus 8, which means that my c squared is 8, which means that my c value is again 2 root 2, or approximately 2.8. So my c value and my b value are actually going to be the same values this time. That doesn't mean they're the same point. It means they're the same values. So now if we go back and plot these, I'm going to start with my, uh, my B value. Um, since my B value is under the X squared, so I'm looking at this one right here, this is going to tell me to go left and right. So I'm going to go left and right 2.8 places, and I'm going to plot that point right about there. 
Then if I look at the Y value, this one I'm going to be going up and down. So I'm going to go up and down four places right there. And if you forget which is which, just remember that the vertices are going to be the larger one or further away. So these are my vertices because they're further away. And these are my co-vertices. And so now I can go back and actually label those points. With my co-vertices, remember you do want to use the exact value of 2 square root 2. So my co-vertices are at 2 root 2, 0 and negative 2 root 2, 0. My vertices were at 0, 4 and 0, negative 4. Now my focal points, my focal points are the same distance as my B value, but the focal points have to be on the, oops, let me switch colors. The focal points have to be on the major axis, which means since my major axis was going up and down, I actually have to go up two root, uh, yeah, two root two, and I have to go down two root two. And my focal points are actually going to be in a different location than those co-vertices. Co so when I identify those focal points, that's going to be at zero and positive two root two, and zero, negative two root two. And when I draw my ellipse, remember, the focal points are inside the ellipse, so just connect your vertices and your co-vertices and you've got your nice elliptical shape, okay? So the first two examples, the equations are provided. We have all the information. It's pulling the information out of the equation, um, sorting through it, and knowing how to use it. In these next, uh, this next example, I want you to notice how the equation looks different than the last ones. We said that the equation of an ellipse is going to be x squared, a y squared, and it's always going to equal 1. And we said that we were going to see some sort of fractions here. Well, we're not seeing any of this, right? We don't see fractions, and we definitely don't see equals 1. So the first thing we have to do is make this equation, we have to put it into the form, uh, the standard form of an ellipse. And the easiest way to do that is to really focus on this equals 1. Since mine right now says equals 36, the only way I can say, make it say equals 1 is by dividing by 36. That would make it say equals 1. Well, of course, if I divide by 36, then I need to divide everything by 36. And now I have those fractions. Reduce the fractions. So, for example, 4 over 36, that's going to reduce to x squared over 9 plus 9 over 36 reduces to y squared over 4. Now I have the equation of my ellipse. And once I have the equation in the format that we're used to, now we can graph it using the same strategies. Uh, and remember, key information, center, vertices, co-vertices, and focal points. The center today is at 0, 0, so I'll plot that right away. Okay, we need our A value, our B value, and our C value. So look for your larger value, your 9. That's going to be my a squared, which means my a value is 3. Your 4 is your b squared, so my b value is 2. And if I do a squared minus b squared equals c squared, 9 minus 4 equals c squared, which means c is square root 5. So I've got all three values. Square root 5 is approximately 2.2. Okay, in order to graph it, start looking at where these values are located. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to go left and right three places since my A value is 3. So if I plot those points, left and right three places, then I'm going to go up and down two places since my B value is 2. So up to down 2. And again, the shorter distances, these are your co-vertices, so that's these guys, and the vertices were my longer distances, so I can right away go and uh, write my ordered pairs. We've got 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. Um, keep in mind, if you want, you could just write plus minus 3, comma 0. My co-vertices are at... Um, let's see, 0, 2, and 0, negative 2. So I could write 0, oops, did I not?
I could write zero um, positive and negative two. I'm going to pause the video because apparently my pen ran out of ink, or I'm sorry, my pen ran out of a uh, of battery. So I'm going to pause the video um, and then I will reload a second video uh, that